Another key element of my home cinema 2.0 project is a brand new screen. Let's talk about what it is and why I'm doing it. So right off the bat I'll say I really do like the screen that I chose in the room three and a half, four years ago when I spec'd the original project. 135 inch 16 by 9 was perfect size for our space. I thought about 150 but I'll acknowledge too even after the fact that would have been a little bit too big. And I chose a Stewart SEMA fixed frame screen. And I think that Stewart is just an incredible value play. And I don't mean that as in a budget play necessarily. You're basically getting Stewart quality at just a lower price with more buying options, meaning you can buy Stuart SEMA screens from presentation companies and other places, not just home theater dealers. It's not really a downgrade in terms of the performance of the screen itself. They're able to control the prices a little bit better because they offer the SEMA in just a limited set of fixed configurations for a screen material and so on that's just almost the quality of the regular Stuart screens. So it's a, it's a tremendous amount of high performance for the money that you spend creating a pretty incredible value. However, I've got a whole bunch of changes going on in my space that are kind of necessitating in one way and then allowing in another uh, a couple of changes to the screen itself. So the one big thing that I'm doing is with my speakers. I love the Focals and I'll be talking about the speakers in a separate video more specifically. So suffice to say right now, I am getting rid of the in-room speakers and I'm going in walls and in ceilings. I'm taking the front array speakers and I'm putting them behind the screen. My current Stuart SEMA screen is not an acoustically transparent and that's what I'm going to need for the new configuration. So when I think about acoustically transparent screens for all of the learning that I've done, all the research that I've done in the home theater space, my mind goes right to Seymour. Seymour seems to be the company that does AT the best in terms of a commercial type of product. And thankfully, I have a connection through Dan DiCarlo at AudioVision who happens to source those screens as well. So when I think about the overall screens for home theater, I kind of see it as, as a Mount Rushmore with three heads on it, three businesses on it. If I were looking for a normal type of screen material in a nice light controlled environment, I just wanted your, you know, your best performing white type of screen, I'm going Stewart. Stewart is what I chose given those logistics and those dynamics when I did my room the first time. When I think about acoustically transparent, like I said, my mind goes to Seymour. As I understand it, they're basically one of, if not like the originator of this kind of technology, and they do it basically the best. And the other one, the third one would be, is if you're putting a screen in a room where you have ambient light and you need to deal with something like that, then my mind goes to screen innovations. And I know all these companies cross over. Stewart has... Uh, acoustically transparent screens. Seymour has non-acoustically transparent screens. They all make some form of light rejection and so on. But those three main types of screen technologies, in my mind, uh, based on my history in home theater, just automatically map to those three companies. And so even after doing some more research on it, I feel pretty confident going with Seymour, in this case, for this screen and this need. So the other thing that I'm doing, since I'm taking the steward out and I'm putting something new in, I have the opportunity to buy it from scratch. I'm going to change something else. And instead of sticking to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I'm going ultra wide. I'm going to go 235 to 1. So I kind of wish in retrospect that I would have been able to do that in the beginning when I did the room the first time. However, I had those speakers on the floor out in front of the screen. And I could not push my towers wide enough without basically leaning them up against the wall and get an ultra wide image through, you know, splitting the difference between those towers. But when those speakers are up now, up on the wall, in the wall, behind the screen, I have a lot more facility to do something in the front of the room. I'm really excited to actually have those speakers out of there, out of the way, and just have that clean front pocket, just the screen floating in space, and taking advantage of this kind of a system configuration. I think it's gonna be more cinematic. I think it's gonna be more enveloping. And I'm really excited to play around with the, the 16.9 plus the ultra wide capabilities of the setup and content in my projector with the JVC NX7 and so on. So what I am gonna do though, is I'm not going for necessarily a smaller screen. 
I'm going to basically keep the screen height the same and just add width. So as I've been looking at the Seymour models, I'm basically choosing the model that has closest to the same height as my 169 135-inch, which is about uh, 66 or so inches. The overall screen height is about 71. So I'm looking at the Seymour screens that overall hit that same 70, 71 inch height, which means I'm not gonna really lose anything in terms of my 16 by nine image from what I have today. I'll go down by just probably a couple inches uh, just by virtue of, of the way the sizes Stewart offers relative to the sizes that Seymour offers. But a couple inches is gonna be negligible. I'm not even gonna really notice that difference. But I will be tacking on a few feet of extra width to take advantage of for those extra wide movies and those extra wide aspect ratios. And again, wider is an option because there's no more towers in the way. When it comes to these screens as well, one of the things you'll see a lot with acoustically transparent is do you go perforated or do you go woven? To me, my research and the information available very, very clearly screams go woven. Woven is the right choice for this type of application. You're gonna get the best performance, the least coloration of your sound coming from behind the screen, and still great video performance and all of that. So that seemed to be a pretty easy choice in this. And of course, woven screens is basically Seymour's golden ticket. The other nice thing about going with a woven option is I'm not gonna have a lot of clearance between my wall and the screen. Now, if you go back to my earlier videos, you might recall that my screen actually floats out in space a little bit. I just put some two by four lumber up on the wall and I mounted the screen mount onto that. And then I have curtains on that front wall, basically all around the screen itself. So it gives that screen that little float out effect at least just a couple of inches or so off the wall. And my plan is just to basically mount the Seymour the same way. I'm gonna take the Stewart down, take its mounting hardware down, and I'm gonna put the Seymour mounting hardware right up on those same two by fours, right at that same height, and it's gonna float the same way. And depending on which specific Seymour screen I chose, I choose, I'm working on that actually right now at the moment, I'm gonna have roughly two to maybe three inches of clearance between the wall and the speakers. And that's plenty enough for their screens and plenty enough for a woven type of screen. And, but if you go for a perforated type, you need more on the range of eight, maybe even a little bit more than that, inches of space between your speaker and the screen material. So it's gonna work out great for the woven. I'm gonna put the speakers right into the existing wall, right behind the screen. I'll have my couple inches of clearance and it's all gonna work out perfect. Now, I did also need to sort out some projector throw details and I almost completely overlooked it. It wasn't until essentially the 11th hour actually, I've already started ordering things and started confirming what I wanted to buy when I realized, huh, how am I gonna make that ultra wide image. I'm not looking to get a lens. I'll talk about more about that in a minute. And I'm just gonna use the installation modes on the projector, which means I'm just gonna zoom it. I'm gonna zoom it up and fill that 240, that 235 to one space, that ultra wide space by using the, the zoom modes of the projector. But if you wanna zoom your image, you gotta have the throw distance to do it. And I actually don't have the full throw distance to completely fill my 235 to one space with what I have in the room right now. My room's about 18 feet long, and if my screen is a couple inches off, off of the front wall, and you need at least a few inches of clearance or so behind your projector, and then you have the depth of the projector itself, I'm only shooting a little over 16 foot, a little over 16 foot throw distance. And if I really wanted to fill a 163 inch 235 to one aspect ratio screen, according to the throw ratio of the JVC NX7, I need 17 and a half feet. So I'm coming up short, unfortunately. However, I'm still gonna be able to get a much bigger image and much more screen real estate out of an ultra wide content source than I could before. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna end up with a little bit of unused screen, either above or below, and I'll probably shift down to the bottom and put all of that unused space at the top. It's all gonna look dark, it's all gonna look black when the movie's playing and all the lights are off because of the rest of the environment. So I'm comfortable not completely filling the screen right now with extra wide content. And I might have some options to solve that in the future. I actually have a closet in the back of my room behind the curtains that you see in the pictures. And so there could be some opportunity to knock some space out, move the projector back further, maybe even put it all the way back into the closet 
if I want to do more of a tear up and take on a little bit more of a carpentry project or you know get somebody in here to help do that um, this past weekend I did actually move the projector back it was at more of like a 15 foot throw distance and so I pulled my mount down and I remounted another foot back to maximize just as much as I could get in the room another option that could happen is if I'm if I'm able to upgrade say all the way to like an NZ9 level projector those do have a little bit of a different throw ratio and so I can get more screen real estate out of an NZ9 than I could out of an NZ7 or an NZ8 but that's a very expensive projector we'll see where where things fall maybe later into 2022 when I actually do consider a projector upgrade but as it is I'm okay with a little bit of, of blank space around the image again it's gonna look black I'm still going to get ultra wide effect. It's going to be much wider and much bigger than it would have been otherwise. And so I'm very excited to do this. And I think buying the bigger screen, keeping the 16.9 height and all of that is the right call in this case. The other thing I'm really eager to try out with regards to the different aspect ratios and so on is the integration between the JVC projector, the Kaleidoscape, and my Control 4 system. Being able to set up the different installation modes play a movie off the Kaleidoscape and have Control 4 look at the aspect ratio and the metadata of the movie and automatically switch to the proper installation mode. That's going to be pretty sweet. For stuff like the Apple TV and so on, I'll have to do that more manually. And of course, all the gaming is going to be 16.9, so it doesn't really matter for that. But given that I try to watch as much content as I can in the theater off the Kaleidoscape versus the Apple TV when possible, of course, because of the audio and visual fidelity, it's going to be pretty cool to play with. So you might ask, well, why not a lens, Panamorph and a Lumigen and all that stuff? And while I think that would be pretty cool, and I, I, I watched some videos recently of the whole kind of chain in action and how a, a Lumigen plus a JVC projector using the Panamorph with the lens always in the light path can auto change and shift things and auto detect the aspect ratio of what's being shown and lock on and, and so on. I think that stuff is really cool. But I don't think I'm going to spend, um, I don't have any intention of spending into that, at least right now. We'll see what happens in the long run. But to me, it's a really, it's a real hard sale, I think, to spend the several thousand dollars on a Panamorph and spend several thousand dollars again on a, on a Lumigen when we have these brand new JVC projectors with this installation mode and these switches and switching capability and such built into the lens memories and built into the installation modes. I think if I'm going to spend that much more money, I think it would be easier for me to spend that money and go all the way and buy a JVC NZ9 than to buy an NZ8 and then add that extra cost for those extra things in. But it's something that I'm going to keep my eye on. I'll be researching and taking a look at. And we'll see if there's anything about managing the system more manually via the projector installation modes that turns having an extra wide multi-aspect ratio constant image height system into kind of a pain. But I've already been in there, even with the screen that I have and so on with the room as it is right now, starting to play with it, setting up two different installation modes and switching between them manually. To me, it's all pretty easy. It's all pretty quick. And again, particularly with the combination of the projector, control four and a kaleidoscape, the majority of my aspect ratio switching movie watching will be completely automated with about 30 minutes of programming in Home Composer. So I think I'll be able to get real close to what what that lens and what that Lumigen and such does without some of its shortcomings that comes with that as well, uh, let alone the, the, the price. And again, I, to me, I don't know. If I'm spending that much money, I, I think I'm plowing all the way into an NZ9, but we'll see what happens. So this is another change for the theater that I'm really, really excited about. You know, having the, having the ultra-wide screen most of the time in our space is spent for movie watching and a lot of movies are wider than 16 by 9. So I think it's going to be really cool to be able to dial those up quite a bit, get the speakers out of the way, just have that that wide picture right there, you know, in our field of view. And so it, it's going to be a whole new dimension, no pun intended. Um, I think of home theater fun sitting in that room and taking in content like that. What are you using for your screen? How do you feel about acoustically transparent? Are you doing a constant image height or a constant image width, switching between stuff? Do you have that lens? Do you have that Lumigen? Let me know about it in the comments. 
feel free to make some recommendations. I haven't fully chosen the specific Seymour screen that I'm buying. And one of the things that I was struggling with a little bit was trying to like decode their offerings, particularly because we have Seymour AV and we have Seymour Screen Excellence, same company, kind of two different branches with very similar products that are not exactly the same. I actually spent about a half an hour on the phone today with one of the reps from Seymour. Dan at Audiovision was able to put me in touch with them. They answered a ton of questions and I opened up the idea that I have the channel. I'm trying to figure some stuff out and learn some things about choosing screens and, and the way that their product offerings break down. And I know Chris Seymour from Seymour has been on some other YouTube channels talking about screen technologies and, and, and so on. And they covered a lot of ground in some of the other videos that I was able to find for my own research. But I still found myself left with a lot of just specifically selective questions about how how the different products in their in their stack in their lineup match up against each other in particular between the two branches so i'd love to do something with the seymour folks uh, here on the channel talk about those technicalities and, and so on i'm trying to make that happen as the channel grows more opportunity presents itself and trying to get some industry folks and some representatives from companies and stuff on here to talk about things and, and and how I'm using them and, and making decisions for, for my space and that sort of thing. I'm really excited to do that. So please like, please subscribe particularly, hit the bell for notifications, look down in the description. I've got an Amazon Associates thing set up and hopefully soon some additional ways to help to support the channel if you want to. I'm spending some good dollars here upgrading to Home Theater 2.0 and it's gonna to lead to all kinds of content. Rest assured, whatever screen I end up do buying, it's gonna get fully covered here on the channel in terms of overview, unboxing, setup, installation, and of course, usability, performance, and all of that sort of thing. So look for more of these Home Theater 2.0 kind of preparatory videos, and then we're going full bore. I've already got equipment on the way. It's gonna be fun, and I think this room is gonna be at a whole nother echelon of performance presentation and capability. So come on back, and thanks for watching.